It is a well-known fact that I was the leader of the infamous crazy gang from back in the day. And with leadership, came great responsibility. I was the man in charge. Whether it would be getting the lads pumped up ready for battle, telling Sam Hammond where to go when it came down to business decisions, and breaking in the young boys. And there was a couple of young boys that I took under my wing during our peak as the most feared football team in the world. Scalazzi was a young lad that came from the West Country. Bristol in fact. And he had absolutely no idea what it took to be a member of the most feared squad the beautiful game had ever seen. All the fash saw was some blonde posh pons who worshipped Thatcher, read the Daily Mail and was a young lad with a good head on his shoulders. Not on the fash's watch. I had to clue this guy in. Wimbledon couldn't do sensible. We had to do ruthless. So we decided as a group that this motherfucker had to learn. One night, Scalazzi bagged himself a date with the gorgeous lady, and they were heading out to the streets of Soho. And so were me, Wisey and Vinny. We had a plan that was going to release the animal in Scalazzi, and make him a better, ruthless player in the process. The couple were having dinner in some Ponce restaurant. I don't remember which one it was. We approached Scales after tipping the waiter a tenner to let us in. Probably more than he was going to get paid in three hours anyway. Scalazzi was baffled to see us there. He asked what we were doing ruining his date. I told his potential future girlfriend that John was a dangerous man, and we had photographic proof. Wise shown the young lady doctored photographs that he specially made earlier that week. Did you know he beats up his wife? I asked her. Scalazzi's face turned from baffled to furious. This is just pictures of you with my head stuck on it, Scalazzi raged. Joan as he told him that if we threw enough mud, something was bound to stick, which made Scalazzi lose his shit. He smashed a glass over Wise's head, kicked me in the bollocks, and smashed Joan as he's head against the table. He proceeded to keep punching fuck out of all of us. Instead of fighting back, we were actually encouraging him. We were yelling yes Scalazzi, more. I had never felt so proud to get a good kicking in my entire life than I did that night. When Scales stormed off, we were bloodied, we were bruised, and we were smiling. The next day at training, Scalazzi arrives with a killer instinct in his eye. He approaches me, shakes my hand and says Fash, thank you mate. I'm ready to go into battle for the scheme. I'm ready to die for the crazy gang. I nodded my head and smiled. I was proud. And that week, we went on to win the FA Cup semi-final. And I always maintain, if it wasn't for that incident in that restaurant, Wimbledon would have been a much, much different team. No Premier League for us. Just lower league football against bums like Oxford United and Huddersfield Town. No thank you. Peter Fear was a young lad that I always liked. When he was an apprentice at the club, he always wanted to clean my boots over everyone else. The lad hero worshipped me. And with good reason. Whilst Joan Azzi, Dennis Wise, Chibo and Corky were all leaving, I stayed. We were like father and son. So when I left Wimbledon to join Villa as it was close to where we taped gladiators, Peter was devastated. Uncontrollable sobbing. I would keep telling him that I was a phone call away, and that I could always get him signed autographs from the gladiators, and possibly get Diane Udale a jet to leave lipstick marks on the autograph as it would look like she kissed it. But Peter wasn't having any of it. Now, I had broken my leg when Giggsy gave me a nasty tackle. That shit happens. It's not ballet. It's a physical game. I had absolutely no beef with Ryan Giggs breaking my leg especially since football was becoming less and less my priority and becoming one of Britain's favorite television personalities along with Noel Edmonds and Chris Evans was. But Peter had a huge problem with it. I had woken up in the hospital after surgery to see Peter by my bedside, uncontrollably weeping. I asked Pete what the fuck he was doing. He was irrational. 
ranting about gigs and how much he must pay. I told Peter everything was okay, and I was thinking of retiring anyway. Peter slammed his fist against the bedside table, and told me no fash. This is what he wants. He must face his ultimate punishment I shook my head in disbelief. I told him that I wanted to focus on broadcasting, but he wasn't having any of it. He stormed off, shouting that he was going to show gigs while they called him the Fear Factory, a name he got from a band he saw on Kerrang! magazine. The next day, I get a phone call from Ryan Giggs, apologizing for what he done. I thought that was a very class act. I told him straight up that he probably did me a favor, and that I was thinking of just calling it quits on football anyway. But then, I hear Giggs shouting at someone. He was yelling oi, what are you doing to my car? Then hung up. I thought that was very odd, but then didn't think much about it and read my copy of Match magazine. Then I get another phone call. It was from Peter, huffing and puffing for breath. Well, fast I did it. He said. I was baffled, but yet intrigued. I asked him what, and he told me he spray painted a giant cock on Ryan Giggs's car. I was furious. I told him that Giggs and I were cool, and that Peter was an absolute fuckwit for what he did. All he could say was but 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 the crazy gang. I told him straight up. I said the crazy gang died when I left. I mean, who was going to lead that army of misfits? Dean Holdsworth? Ethan E. Cokew? Marcus Gale? Do me a favor. Then he started crying again as he kept putting 10p in the payphone. But what about this fash? He said. I told him that he and I will always have that special bond, and if he ever needed me for anything, I was there. I was never going to abandon him. He felt so much better, and so did I. John Scales went on to have somewhat of a successful career. Peter Fear didn't to be fair, but I helped mold those lads to become the men that they are today. And I think if I ever saw them in this day and age again, they would shake my hand and say Fash, thank you mate, and I would look them dead in the eye and say, you're welcome.